Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue, and welcome to our game day edition of the show. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Joining us in just a few minutes with her thoughts on Saturday's big playoff game will be the angel of the big house, beat writer Angelique Schengelis from the Detroit News. Michigan arrived in Phoenix on Monday evening, and each day will be a whirlwind leading up to Saturday. The players have been available for media interviews, there is practice, and a lot of activities for the guys to enjoy this week. I thought we'd start off today with a few interview snippets from earlier this week. Oluolu Atimi was asked if all of this is what he envisioned when he came to Michigan earlier this year. This is what I envisioned. I envisioned that, that we'd be, uh, you know, we'd have a great season up until this point and that we'd put, position ourselves to play meaningful games at the end of December and um, in January. So. I envisioned all the team success. That's why I came here. Like I wanted to win a conference championship. I wanted to play for a national championship and uh, win a national championship. And um, as far as the the personal success, I mean, when the team is rolling and you're playing well, then all the accolades always always end up uh, coming. Ryan Hayes was asked what being a part of another Joe Moore award-winning offensive line means to him. It was really special. We were just talking about it. Yeah, we got there. Um, Last year was great. We, we didn't really expect it at the beginning of the year, but after we won it, I know we had a lot of guys coming back. We kind of had that. Uh, we just expected to win it again. We wanted to work as hard as we can because we knew how great of a feeling it was. We wanted to be the first back to back and did that. So it was one of our goals, and now we want to go win this one, win the next one. How much did losing last year's playoff game drive this team in the off season? Ronnie Bell answered that question. I feel like that's drove us all year. I feel like that's been like the biggest chip on our shoulder all season. Um, and that's been something we kind of talked about all season. Um, and I feel like it's been a part of that chip and like that loss has been a part of every victory that we've had this year. Like, uh, you know, like every time we've won or every every locker room at post game, like everybody's, you know, happy and excited and joyful. And then, you know, like a, like a, a, a flip is switched or a switch is flipped. And, uh, you know, we're on to the next opponent, and we're on to, like, our bigger and badder goals that we have in front of us. Jim Harbaugh and Donovan Edwards shared their thoughts on what it means to be in this position for a second year in a row. Right where we want to be, and, uh, like I said, the best of the best playing the best. That's where we want to be. Uh, Ready to have at it. Like I said, after the Big Ten championship game and Coach Harbaugh, uh, he said he said at first, I thrive in the big games. I come alive in the big games. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to play in the big games. My guest today has been covering Michigan football for a long time now. She thinks they are relaxed and ready to rock this Saturday. With us next is beat writer Angelique Schengelis from the Detroit News. So stay with us.
with us on the show today is Michigan beat writer Angelique Shingelis from the Detroit News. And it seems like not that long ago uh, we were together, Angelique, getting ready as we have for a long time now for the Ohio State game. But I have to say I might like this tradition even better, uh, getting together for uh, playoff talks. Can I be the uh, the guest, the permanent guest for that kind of thing? Absolutely. I, I would be really honored. That would be like, you know, two and three games. That's, that's uh, Ohio State and then the national semifinal. That's great. I love it. And I could get used <laughs> to doing this every year, too. So, uh, <laughs> I bet. I but, bet. But we have to enjoy this uh, while it's here. So crazy busy week uh, for, for everyone uh, covering the team and, of course, the team. But they got down there on Monday night, uh, I think practiced earlier in Ann Arbor before they they got down to uh, Arizona. They are going to be busy, busy guys all week, aren't they, Angelique? They are. They have a, a very, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I was looking at the schedule this year and then versus last year when they were in Florida. And, you know, a couple of the guys have talked about that the last few days, Mike, that the last year was, you know, they were happy to be there. And they went to the pool and they went to the beach and they had a cool hotel in South Florida. And they all look at that now and say, what, that was really a mistake. You know, they, they kind of would drag themselves from the pool and go to practice. And it was just different. And, you know, they didn't, they didn't feel like they got their best performance. And so that's the whole thing about they've been there before. They live and learn. And now this year, they do have a schedule, a pretty full schedule of, of, of availability and with, with media opportunities. And um, on Thursday, they have a big uh, – a big – each team has a big media day, so all the players are available and another open practice. But they are not doing anything crazy. They're not, you know, they're not going for hikes on Camelback Mountain or anything like that. They are strictly focused on the task at hand. So that that felt a little different. It's really different than a regular bowl atmosphere. Then I mean, the Fiesta Bowl, you think, oh, they're they're doing all these fun things uh, that you, you've seen them do in, in previous years. But it's different because it's yes, it's the Fiesta Bowl, but it's a playoff game. Oh, it's totally different. And it's, it's, um, I think they even feel it. The, the handful of players that, that came to the availability, um, Wednesday morning, it, you know, they have a big, they have big sheets with their, um, their names and their photos on it behind them. And I think that they see it and realize this is a big deal. They don't get bad at, at other bowl games. You get a podium and, and it's not dressed up like this. And, and I think they know, they certainly understand the um, how big this moment is, and but I think that they also feel this level of confidence because they they experienced it last year, and and maybe they didn't handle it as well as they'd like, but they understand now what how to really pace themselves and how to spend their time and and how to get the most out of practice and and all of those things that that come from learning, and and they certainly got that experience last year, and I think they're applying just a whole different approach this year. And um, and now you see TCU sort of in the Michigan role from last year. This is their first time here. And, you know, are they going to get blinded by the big lights? Are they going to do, you know, too many kind of off-the-field activities that, that might be distracting? So, I mean, that'll be interesting to see, but Michigan is definitely avoiding that. Well, and when you watch the availabilities this week with the players and the coaching staff, the one thing that comes across, Angelique, is they seem very relaxed, don't they? They do, and, and I think that that's been really the case all season. <laughs> and even in the second half, and even you know when they go into halftime and they, they haven't played their best first half, they've just seemed relaxed. And, and I don't know who's setting that tone. I, I part of me thinks it's, it's J.J. McCarthy. The kid has, like, you know, he just doesn't go crazy high, he doesn't go low, and and they sort of mirror that as a team. And, and you know, Harbaugh, I think, has been a little different this year, too. And, and maybe coaching with a different sort of confidence because he knows he has a good team and, um, and, and really just really good players, good guys. And, but this team is, um, I agree with you, extremely relaxed. And I think that comes with confidence. And they feel good about who they are, how they've performed. And, uh, you know, I think you can, if you want to look even – even deeper, you just look at these these second half performances. How they just don't they keep that's their word flinch. They don't flinch, and they really don't. And that's sort of how they carry themselves um, when they're when they're talking to us too. Is just yeah, you know, they're just rolling with it, and they feel good. They feel definitely confident with the game plan they have and the personnel that they have. Even without Blake Corm, I mean, that's still hard to believe that Blake Corm's not playing. 
and that they still have this level of confidence, but they do. This week, you've been able to uh, get to practices. Yes, there are 15-minute uh, sessions that you get to see, or up to 15 minutes. Uh, today was not one of those Wednesdays uh, when we're taping, but um, how have you found that to be, watching uh, the 15 minutes of practice? Oh, so it's, you know, it's not much, and it's, it's fun <laughs> to get that, to, you know, be reminded that, oh, yeah, they do have practice. Yeah, because we used to see a little bit more. Some of the bull games, it would be a little bit longer. And sometimes Tarball would say, just stay a little bit longer, you can feel a little bit. And no one has known to that Tuesday at practice. We were escorted out pretty promptly. But um, it is good to see. And you get to see some of the early enrollee freshmen there. And they did have the offense on one field and the defense on another when we were there. So um, I calculate. I decided I was just going to watch the offense on Tuesday and, and Thursday at practice. I'm going to go and check out what the defense is doing. But um, you do get little snippets of, of at least seeing how coaches handle their players and their position groups, and and that's always that. That's I, I find that very interesting. And and you see how I mean, you're not seeing much. You're seeing stretching and a few drills. So you're not seeing the real meat of the practice, but it, it's still um, it's still fun for me, at least, to see how the players interact with, with each other and with their coaches. You know, one of the things I was uh, thinking about the other day, Angelique, was that this is the uh, second appearance for Michigan football in the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, the first was on New Year's Day, 1986, and that was against Nebraska. 27-23 Michigan win, and I remember that game well. I'm not sure a lot of our fans uh, would remember, though, that our quarterback was Jim Harbaugh. And uh, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was. But, wow, stakes are completely different this time for Jim. They are. And he's 59 now. He's yeah. not, not a college <laughs> kid. And, um, and, you know, he, 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 I think everybody knows that he doesn't really talk much about his playing days at Michigan. He'll, he'll give you some little snippet here and there, but he doesn't go deep into, into discussing those things. But, um, yeah, this is. I mean, I, I didn't see the team then, back then, and this is a, it, it just, it's a whole new world on so many levels. I mean, with with the changing landscape of, of college football and and even this whole playoff system and that will be expanding soon like the conferences are, it's just a totally different world. And um, But, you know, you have that those constants, like Jim Harbaugh, who was here in the, in the you know, in 1986. And playing, and you can connect all those dots, and it, it does. It, it makes you realize that it, it it was a long time ago, but it doesn't feel like that not long ago. But you also, when you look at at the game then and look at it now, you just see how much it has changed. And and I would imagine even just like the media, how how you know, there's, there's a lot of national media here covering this national semifinal. There's a lot, obviously, covering the Georgia Ohio State game and in Atlanta, but there are a lot of people showing up for this game. And, and you realize that this is like, it's not like any other bowl game you've covered. And you know, maybe the Rose Bowl 97 had that feel, but in general, this is, this is really um, is rare as, as the uh, Michigan team likes to say about the recruits. That's what this is. Well, as far as uh, the injuries go for Michigan, uh, we've had three weeks, a little more than three weeks to uh, heal up since that big 10 championship game. And I know I saw on Twitter yesterday you had a a, a little bit of video on uh, Donovan Edwards uh, taking a handoff. Is he is he still wearing some type of protective device, Angelique? He is. Yeah, it's it looks like a less bulky. Not that the previous pass the one he wore to Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game was bulky, but it seems even um, more um, refined than that one. And he's catching balls. I mean, he he can do a lot, and I, I think that that's not going to be an issue. Um, he seemed fine. He's in a good mood. He was being goofy yesterday at practice. Um, so I think he's good, as good as he's going to be. And uh, but I don't think you know. I think he 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 will be able to catch passes if that's what they need him to do. So I don't I don't see that being an issue. And as far as any other injuries, the only one I've uh, heard mentioned, uh, and really not any specific injury uh, talk, was Andrew Anthony, who had I think been watching practice the first couple of days. But uh, other than that. Not a lot's been said about injuries, has there? No, there really hasn't been. I saw A.J. Henning was in shorts yesterday to Tuesday's practice. Andrell, as you mentioned, Olu, people have seen him in a, in a boot earlier this month after the Big Ten Championship game. And um, I asked him yesterday, Tuesday, and he said he's fine. He's feeling good. And, and I think that was just a precautionary issue with him. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I think generally speaking, and you know, Mike Morris today said he's good. He had the high ankle sprain. He sort of tweaked it a little bit more um, against Ohio State, and you know, I think he um, he's good. I mean, he's this is that's the benefit of having these weeks off, and and not not. Uh, I think they had a, a whole week off. Um, right after the Big Ten Championship game where the coaches went recruiting and the players you know, had finals and stuff to take care of. So um, he's been able to heal up as well. So I, I think in, in pretty good shape overall. Well, let's talk about uh, this Saturday's matchup then with uh, TCU. And I guess any discussion of the Horn Frogs this year has to start with Max Duggan. And I really like watching this kid play. I have mm-hmm. to say that. And I don't think Michigan has seen a quarterback this year that is quite like this kid, have they, Angelique? They haven't, Mike. And and I've asked a couple players in Ann Arbor uh, before we left. I asked them about that, and they all just sort of think, you know, maybe Tua a little bit, and, and maybe O'Connell is, is the Purdue quarterback. But no one has the the that well-rounded game that he has, and the ability to to make big plays with his with his uh, feet as well, and. Um, and they just, you know, somebody was walking around asking the players if you could describe describe him next with with one word. They were asking the Michigan players, and and the one that I thought was really fitting was I think it was Monty. He said heart. I mean, the guy plays with so much heart, and and I do think the Michigan players are very impressed by him and with him. And um, he's got a big receiver. He's got a big running back. And um, there was a, you know, everyone's talking about Michigan's confidence and. And I went around listening to all the, the TCU players the last couple of days, and, and they are, this is a very extremely confident group as well. And a team that was like Michigan last year, unranked in the preseason. They were picked to finish sixth, I believe, in the, in the Big 12. And then they, you know, they're in the college football playoff like Michigan was last year. So um, I didn't get the sense that they have that happy to be here kind of vibe at all. But, um, but I agree with you. I think Max is, um, he's, you know, he was a runner up in the Heisman Trophy for a reason. And and I know a lot of the Michigan players caught that Big Big 12 championship game that they lost in overtime that was on before they played their Big Ten championship game. And, and I think that that really, that really impressed them, his, his, the way he plays. And they're an impressive team to watch. I mean, big play team, no question about it, especially uh, through the air. And they have some big-time talent, starting with uh, wideout Quentin Johnson, uh, projected as a, a top-10 pick in the draft uh, in the spring. But he has plenty of help. And the thing you notice when you watch these guys on tape, Angelique, is this is a big receiving core. These are tall, rangy guys. Yeah, and that can be trouble for Michigan. And you know, talking to Steve Klingscale Wednesday, I, I mean, he certainly knows that, that they've given up they've given up yardage through the air. But his point is, is they have made plays when they've needed to. You know, you can look at the Ohio State game and look what Mike Sanders still did. You look at the Big Ten championship game and you see what Will Johnson did, and they thought they could have had another, maybe one or two more interceptions in that game. So he feels like they've got to clean up the amount of yardage that they've given up, but he also thinks that they, they clean up. They stop they stop drives when they need to. Not always, but, but for the most part. So I, you know, I think this is going to be a really interesting game for, for Will Johnson in particular. I think he's a guy who um, has really come on the second half of the season. He talked about how he, you know, he really started growing into the role. The more when he started getting the starts, when he filled in for Jamon, and uh, he's feeling so much more comfortable in the atmosphere. He kept focusing on the atmospheres and the environments of the game and the stadium. So I think that you know it's something that we don't think about that freshmen deal with, and and he feels really good about that too. But yeah, these are this is you know Johnson's really good. He's really really good and. And Mozzie pointed out today, he goes, you know, no one's really talking about the running back, but he's really good too. So um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot on this, this defensive line and having Mike Morris back is, is going to be key and, and trying to rattle this guy if they can, Max Dugan, so he can't make those completions and doesn't, then they don't put the pressure on the, on the defensive secondary. Well, it's funny that uh, you mentioned what Mozzie Smith said, because I feel the same way. I mean, you watch any highlights or previews for the game, and we're seeing the passing game and Max Duggan uh, getting out and running, but we don't hear much or see much about the running game. But holy moly, I mean, uh, Kendra, uh, uh, what's he? Big. Kendra Miller, yeah, big kid. uh, Just over 1,400 yards on the ground, I think, this year. They have a a very good offensive line. This team can run the ball really well. That's going to be Interesting to see them match up against that Michigan front. 
I agree. And I mean, I saw, I saw Kendra today at the, at the news conference. I'm like, wow, well, he's bigger than I thought he was. I mean, he's really thick and, and can be a problem to bring down. So I, I do think it's, it's going to be, I, I don't know. No one has really talked a lot about TCU's offensive line. I don't get the sense that, that they are a fearsome group, but they've obviously done the trick. And, and, you know, you could say, well, they haven't faced a big 10 defense like this and, and, this Michigan defense could really provide a lot of problems that they have not seen in the Big 12. Well, conversely, Michigan hasn't seen an offense like this. And um, I, I really do. I, I, I think it's going to be a really cool matchup. And the other thing is that they both have been really strong second-half teams. And um, TCU has, has really uh, – they've pulled out some wins, like uh, about six wins, I think, going to the second half where they've really had to work hard to get those. And, and obviously, Michigan has – has really distinguished itself in the, in the second half and, and the way they've performed on both sides of the ball. And uh, I, I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a really good matchup. I, I, I don't know, you know, I see people saying, oh, they're going to blow them out, but I, I don't see it like that. This is They're going to be tough. I, I agree. I mean, a lot of Michigan fans I've been talking to in the last couple of weeks feel the same way. They're talking about, okay, Georgia or Ohio State is next. And I think, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. this TCU team, make fun of the Big 12 all you want for not playing defense or what we think is defense in the Big 10. But this is a very talented team, and all you have to do is look at pro football focus and listen to some of the NFL scouts. This team has a lot of NFL talent on it. And, you know, other than Ohio State, this is the best team that Michigan has seen this year. Oh, I totally agree. Uh, I know. I mean, I, I've had editors saying, Okay, so we want to talk about, you know, the National Championship Week. I said, look, they haven't even played this game yet. They haven't (laughs) won this game to start even thinking about uh, what could happen next week. And and I said that because, I, you know, I just don't think it's a foregone conclusion. And there is a reason TCU is one of the the four best teams. And, you know, you can look at people and say, oh, maybe they're like the Cincinnati last year. And I'm like, well, I don't think that's the case. I think this is legitimately a team that can be very dangerous and can give teams like Michigan, any team, trouble. And, um, yeah, I think it's, it's wrong to go in there with the assumption that, uh, it's, yeah, this is just a foregone conclusion. Start booking your flights to Los Angeles because I don't think that would be a smart thing. Oh, no. And, and one of the things that seems like a constant theme when I'm talking to Michigan fans is, yeah, look at that that, that defense. I don't think they've seen a def- uh, they've seen an <laughs> offense like Michigan's going to put on the field. But you know what? That is one of the fascinating elements in this game, that matchup. Uh, TCU's numbers, they aren't eye-popping. I know I've said it before. It's mm-hmm. a, You know, in the Big 12, it's a, that's sort of the way it is. Uh, they played the bend-but-don't-break <laughs> defenses. Everyone's throwing the ball. But you know what you can say about this defense is they've come up big this year when they've needed to, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be really fun to see, you know, they're, all, all of the defensive players from TCU talked about yeah, on Tuesday, you just got to stop the run, stop the run. Someone said, you know, if you're going to beat Michigan, what's the one thing? Stop the run. I mean, it was just across the board. So they are going to load the box. They are going to try to, to slow Donovan Edwards and Kalel Mullins and, you know, it's going to be, uh, I think you're going to have to look at JJ and see, does, does he have a performance like he did uh, against Ohio State when he had the big the big completions and, and the, the plays to Cornelius and, and Colson Loveland? And, you know, I, I, it's going to be, a, and I think JJ certainly relishes that role. Um, but, you know, I just got to believe that, that Donovan Edwards can still run against this defense. I, I really think even though they're going to focus on on stopping it. I, I think that he's got the ability and, and you know, he's just, um, he's so really, uh, you know, they're going to miss Blake, no doubt, but he's, uh, he, he's got a lot of different levels in his game. And, and I think it's going to be really fun to watch JJ and Donovan and, and see how they do against this defense and, and the receivers. I'm not sure who's going to emerge, you know, is it going to be another Cornelius Johnson kind of game? Is Ronnie Bell going to come up big? It's, you know, all these different pieces are in play, and uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what TCU chooses to try to stop in terms of the receivers. Because, um, you know, I think they've, they've had some pretty good success, too. They've had a couple pick sixes, and, 
they have some pretty good defensive backs too, and and, and people should not uh, underestimate that aspect of their game. Well, you know, one of the uh, other things that we've heard a lot about in the past two weeks uh, is speed. Sonny Dykes uh, thinks mm-hmm. TCU has an advantage in that department, and part of me chuckles because uh, one of the uh, great things about getting older is it seems like if you're a Big Ten fan, we have mm-hmm. heard this for the last forty years when it comes to a bowl game with the SEC, the ACC, uh, the Pac-8, Pac-10, Pac-12, whatever it is now, that the Big Ten is just slow. And, you know, I, to me that's fascinating because pro football focus says Michigan has nine guys uh, that will be drafted next year and a boatload of underclassmen who are going to be NFL prospects. Do you buy into that speed thing that Michigan doesn't have the speed to keep up? Well, you're right. It is something that gets recycled year after year after year. And it's just an old, old stereotype, big sluggish, big 10. And, you know, okay, maybe for, I, I wanted to throw out Wisconsin, but I don't think that's fair anymore either. <laughs> uh, you, know, you, you know, I get why people say that and, and they just see these big brawny guys. But um, I, I think that Michigan's got a lot of speed. And and I, not just on offense, but I think they have speed on defense too. And um, it's emerging, and there's some some of the younger guys that are coming up and, and making a difference. But yeah, I think that's definitely an overrated uh, theme that people throw out there because it's easy. And um, I, I just think that's really unfair to say that. And uh, I, you know, if you want to look at the offense, I mean, look how look. I, you know, there's some wheels on on some of these guys. Donovan, everybody saw what he did on those two two long runs against Ohio State. That looked like great speed to me. <laughs> and Blake Corum, when he was playing, it looked like pretty good speed to me too. And then you see some of these receivers, um, you know, maybe you haven't seen the production that you want to see out of them, but you do know that they are fast and, and that they can be they can be dangerous when, when they're clicking. So, yeah, I mean, like, I just think it's, it's just so – it gets really tiring, but it's the easy theme. It's, you know, if they were playing an SEC game, team, it would be, oh, boy, can the Big Ten match up with the SEC? I'm like, oh, gosh, how many years have I heard that that question? And, and you know, I, it goes back to those early 90s. I mean, when Michigan played um, Washington, there was, a, there was a speed discrepancy there, and then Michigan decided to work on that. So, um I mean, it's not like it's not an inaccurate thing, but I don't think it's an accurate description nowadays. No, I don't either. Uh, we've sent an awful lot of slow guys to the NFL over uh, the last several <laughs> years. So, I mean, I, I don't buy into it either. So, we'll, you know, let, the, let them keep that up, though. I, I enjoy it. You know, most of the storylines leading up to this game seem to be, you know, something like, can Michigan slow down Max Duggan and the big play offense? Uh, and can Michigan be successful if TCU slows down our run game on offense? You know, I, I suppose that's fair, but I think the wild card in this game really isn't Max Duggan. I mean, he's a great player. We know that. We've seen it all year. To me, I think it's J.J. McCarthy. You know, I think he likes the stage, and the other thing is, I don't think we've seen J.J. ceiling yet, not even close, Angeli. Oh, not even close, and I agree with you. I think he loves it. And we were uh, walking away together on uh, Tuesday, and I just said, you know, JJ, there's something about you that, I, you know, he's uh, he's this, you know, do good kid. He's, you know, makes all these donations. He's uh, he's a nice guy. And I just said, I get this feeling there's like some kind of sneaky competitiveness in you. And he's like, oh yeah, he goes, I I totally have that, and I really try to work on it because he said he was uber competitive to the point where it got it was a little too much and until he went to img he said that was a problem and then he sort of worked on it and that's sort of part of the process of of again sort of not doing too much too in games and not trying to be the hero all the time and and part of his growth process but it doesn't go away and like he even says the little wave he did at ohio state he's like I've been thinking about that for a year. And I said, was it just for that game? And he's like, yeah, just for that. He just wanted to do that. So it's, it's those little subtle things that you just realize this guy is probably uh, just a killer, you know, and he really, he is a competitive, competitive guy, but you, you sort of lose that when you see him doing his, his uh, meditation and his smiling and asking everybody how they are doing that day, which is very nice. But I think it just masks that he is, um, he is like, I, I mean, I keep saying a killer, but you know what I mean? Just really competitive. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think he does love this moment. And uh, he loves being the guy now. So that's that's exactly what you want in your quarterback, I think. I mean, that seems like it's always been the right recipe. Well, there's a ton of NFL talent on the field uh, in this game on both sides of the ball, uh, as we've been talking about. And, uh, I mean, TCU has plenty. We have to admit that. Would you expect anything other than, uh, then a close game. Of course, we, you know, turnovers could change all of that, but it, it's hard to see this game being decided before the fourth quarter, isn't it? I think so. I mean, I really do think it'll be a close game, and, and I haven't really thought about what I think the score might be yet or anything like that, but I do think that, it, you know, they because the teams are so different and they're not that familiar with, with the type of, of teams that, that each one is, I think that'll make the first half a little bit more like, you know, I know a couple of the players this week have been talking about boxing, liking likening everything to boxing. So there's those those early rounds where they're trying to, you know, feel things out and feel figure out each other. And I think it's going to be another big second half, and and it won't be like Michigan blowing them out, like just watching that lead get bigger and bigger. I think that they're going to stay with them, TCU, and and uh, and and because because they both understand how to play, how to finish games. And obviously they, they lost a lot of time in the big 12 championship game, but they understand that, that the second half is they can close the door. And I think you're going to see a very close game. And um, I, it's so funny because I talked to some people who aren't even, you know, not Michigan fans and they're like, oh, TCU is just, they're going to blow out TCU. And, and it, you know, maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. yeah maybe. You know, and these are people who like are state fans and they're not, they're, they're just not Michigan fans and they, they've already written off TCU. But I, I think that's a big mistake because I, I, there is some, the guy was the, the Heisman Trophy runner up for a reason. And, um, uh, but I, again, you know, I agree with you about JJ, but I also think this, if Michigan's offensive line plays like it, it is capable and has been playing, then I, I do think, they can they can really uh, they can wear down this this defense and, and that might be a difference maker too. Yeah, that'll be the interesting thing to watch because uh, Michigan we all know how incredible Michigan has been in the uh, the second half uh, uh, of just about every game this year. The numbers are eye popping. Really, you can say the same thing about TCU. They are in really truly a, a second half team that's had to come from behind um, six or seven times. I think it was in the second mm-hmm. half. So this is really the first matchup that for Michigan with the team that the second half is uh, where they bring it to. Exactly. And that's that's what I keep saying is you just cannot count this team out. It's, they don't die. They keep they keep fighting. And I think that's why you saw Max Dugan with you know, with tears after the, the loss in the Big Twelve championship. You know, they they were used to fighting hard and winning in the second half, and then that one got away from them in overtime. It, that's why I like this matchup because I, I do I think you know, everyone has rightfully made a big deal about Michigan's second half because they've been they've been pretty spectacular. Um, but you, as you bring up, I mean, so is TCU, and they and they don't quit. And um, and Michigan, they've been pushed. So they they definitely Illinois. I think that Illinois game will end up being a very very important game for Michigan. That they um, they got they got pushed, and they they knew that they how to come back and and win that game and and make a couple clutch plays along the way and with guys that you probably didn't expect to make those big those big conversions like Isaiah Gash. And so I think that they both come into this with a lot of confidence because they know how to finish games and, and they know how to, how to come back when they have to. Well, final question before we let you get away, Angelique. Uh, and this is, you know, sort of looking past the TCU game in a way, but we can do that. <laughs> the team can't, but we can do that. <laughs> if Michigan does find a way uh, to win on Saturday, they're going to get the winner of Georgia and Ohio State. And I guess this is really a two-part question, but one, uh, does Michigan match up better with Georgia this year? Or two, if Ohio State wins, how epic uh, would that game be for a national championship? Well, it would be epic. Someone who loves the Michigan-Ohio State game like we both do, it would be epic. But I, I, you know, I know what J.J. said after the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, bring him on. I think that, no, I think they would prefer to play Georgia. And you know, there is a thing about playing a team twice and, um, you know, they do know each other very well. And I think, uh, to answer your first question, I think they match up much better with this Georgia team. I mean, that was, that was a tremendous Georgia team last year Mm -hmm. and they don't have some of those key defensive players. And, you know, I think that Michigan's offensive line, which 
I know we talked about this, but like that that first series against Georgia last year when Michigan's offensive line, which had just won the Joe Moore Award, got pushed, you know, they're on their heels. You know, I thought, okay, this game's over. And because the, the offensive line was clearly overmatched. And I, I don't think that's the case this year. I think Olu, Olu with Timmy is just, he, you know, he took them to a new level. And, and that's why I think that that would be a really good matchup for them this year against Georgia. But um, I know it would be, I, I think it would be very cool to see Michigan Ohio State. There's no doubt about it. But I, I think that deep down that uh, Michigan coaches, if they were being honest, and if you could catch them in an honest moment when they were asked this question, I think that they would uh, they would say they'd want to play Georgia. Yeah, I agree. So, um, and one more question, I lied. You <laughs> know, when when talking about that Ohio State game, you know, we we've, we've mentioned that a lot of Michigan people and media people we hear from in the last two weeks are sort of writing off TCU, which is you know is astonishing. But I find in the Georgia Ohio State game, they're pretty much doing that with Ohio State, saying you know. Uh, hey, it's in Atlanta, and uh, George is going to smoke them in Atlanta. I think this this is a game Ohio State can win. Absolutely, I agree. I mean, I you know, <laughs> T.J. Stroud didn't have a great game against Michigan. It wasn't a horrible game, but it wasn't his best. And then you got Marvin Harrison, and he's just really good. And they've got to get their running game, uh, you know, a little more stout for this game. And um, but they have so many good pieces on that Ohio State team, uh, obviously. And and you know, I think the one thing that the college football playoff committee chair kept saying even after the, the Ohio State lost to Michigan is well they were it was still pretty close you know in the second half and until Michigan you know they got the big runs by Donovan which which certainly swelled that that um that score for Michigan but you know they they were firm believers in Ohio State the college football playoff committee and and I think people do look at that Michigan Ohio State score and, and say oh blowout but it wasn't a blowout until that fourth quarter, in my opinion. And, and you know, Ohio State was there, and they've got so many – there's so much talent there. So I agree with you. I think that Ohio State – and talking to some of the Ohio State writers uh, the last few days um, before they headed down to Atlanta, they felt like Ohio State was one team that could really give Georgia a, a difficult time and, and beat them. So um, I, I'm sure they're not coming up with that on their own. I think that the Ohio State coaches probably feel very confident going to this one, too. Yeah, I agree. What a great weekend it's going to be on uh, New Year's Eve. It's going to be fun. Are, oh, just two great games. And, you know, here we are recording this on Wednesday, and I'm I'm ready to uh, get the ankles <laughs> taped and uh, tee this thing up. <laughs> tee it off. I'm ready for the games. But we'll just have to wait. So Always. And I wish I could watch that second game. I mean, that's going to be really uh, tough. We're all trying to – on a um, on a red eye after the uh, Michigan TCU game, so yeah. I think I'm going to miss most of the Ohio State game. So uh, got it recorded. Ah, <laughs> I'll yes. be watching it when I get back. Well, here with us today, uh, as we get ready for the uh, the Fiesta Bowl slash playoff game, has been Michigan beat writer Angelique Shengelis from the Detroit News. Angelique, uh, as you know, always a pleasure and a lot of fun uh, having you on the show and. Uh, we look forward to following uh, what you have to tell us uh, this week in the uh, Detroit News. A happy New Year to you, and we look forward to that next visit. Thank you, Mike. Happy New Year to you, and um, I look forward to making this a uh, permanent date on the National Semifinal Week. Well, let's do that. On Quick Hits today, there isn't much more to be said about this game. We're all ready to tee it up and get this one underway. As Angelique and I said, this sure looks like a game that could go down to the wire. I'm hoping it's a comfortable win. It would make it easier on all of our nerves. But this TCU team deserves to be here. And I think we're in for one heck of a game. That's the way it should be when you get a matchup with two teams as dynamic as this. Whatever happens, we'll be back next week. I hope and pray we'll be recapping a big win on Saturday and looking forward to the national championship game. Let's enjoy this moment. Whether you are a young Michigan fan or like many of us, 
fans that have been watching Michigan football for decades, these are moments we have all been waiting for. And just two years ago, it seemed like we were eons away from this being a reality. These are the good times. Let's buckle up and enjoy what Saturday brings us. That will do it for now. Before I sign off, I would like to wish each and every one of you a very happy Maize and Blue New Year. I am so thankful you tune into my little labor of love, and I enjoy hearing your feedback during the course of each year. Keep it coming. Thank you from the bottom of my Maize and Blue heart. Think victory, BTCU. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Until we meet again, take care, and as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24 7 for your calls at 313 263 4842. That's 313 263 4842. Or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!